All right, welcome back. It's time for uh, Off the Press, and I have Professor Kamilu Sani Fage, a public affairs analyst, joining us this morning for that. Good morning to you, Professor. Good morning. Thank you. Okay, so, Prof, let's go straight and start with the Punch newspaper. So, the Punch newspaper leads with subsidy pain, labor talks tough. ASU, protesters condemn relief plans. And the writers there, Sanu, ASU, say fuel subsidy unintelligently removed. NLC meets today. TUC rejects 5% telecom tax, plant tuition hike, acquire Ogun roll out palliatives. And right in front there, you see a picture of protesters civil society groups protesting in Edo State against the cost, the high cost of living, specifically, specifically the recent hike in pump price of petrol. And that happened yesterday in Benin City. Prof, let's start with this. Nigerians are groaning. The organized private sector is struggling to stay afloat. Yes, uh, Nigerians are groaning. I, I think the, the paper actually catch up with uh, what is happening, um, which I think shouldn't have gone unnoticed. Uh, leaders should uh, look into it and do something urgently, because uh, like the paper said, uh, it is not only the organized labor that is groaning, uh, which uh, as a result of uh, this uh, increase, but majority of Nigerians are also groaning and complaining silently. Uh, silently? So I think, Professor, uh, I think the only people who are not groaning and complaining at this point are the politicians. All Nigerians oh, yes, that across the country, and even those abroad who are feeling our pains, are complaining loudly at this point no what what i'm saying the ordinary people who don't have the the means the the avenue to bend their own views are doing it and not to the leaders but um if uh, what happened with the organized labor uh, the the leaders will look at it as a reflection of the views of Nigerians, even those who are quiet, because at it being they have the avenue to vent their own anger and their own views, I think uh, it will be out. As we have started seeing with the Edo uh, civil society organizations. And uh, the thing is, you know, these organized ones, uh, okay, the best way, because if you allow it to be unorganized, if you allow the ordinary people to uh, come out and do it without, uh, uh, you know, an organization, it is going to be chaotic and anarchic for the country. Indeed. And then you have the fact that the FG, the federal government, recently got an injunction stopping, you know, organized labor from protesting against the removal of fuel subsidy. How do you see this move by the federal government trying to gag uh, labor? I think uh, that is dangerous because like I said, uh, organized labor, the government will have the control. They, uh, they know who are the leaders, but if they allow it to be spontaneous, uh, without any leadership, then it is going to be dangerous for the uh, country. So I think um, that is one. Secondly, it is highly undemocratic. Uh, the, the leaders should remember that they are representative of the people, they are elected by the people, so they should not gag uh, any, uh, you know, views. Because by doing that, they will become more militaristic than the military. So I think it is uh, wrong, it is dangerous, and it is undemocratic for the government to go to court uh, in order to stop the organized labor from bending, uh, bending the views of uh, the people. All right, let's go above the masthead of the Punch newspaper. You have 
most Nigerian leaders' knowledge of development shallow. And that's former President Olusegun Obasanjo making that statement there yesterday when he gave a keynote address in Abuja. Yes, you see, uh, given his own experience, uh, uh, I think this is a, an apt statement that um, uh, uh, what we have now, most of the leaders don't have uh, uh, an inkling, an idea of what uh, development is, what, about poli what politics is about, and so on. I think this is one of the irony and, uh, you know, shortcomings of democracy. Because demo in democracy, you elect people based on what uh, the electoral want, not because not because necessarily they are the most competent one. So any person who the people want, uh, I mean, like whether he or she is uh, knowledgeable, competent or no, that is the one that you have. So that is why you see from the lawmakers at the local government up to the national, from uh, the chairman up to the presidency, you find out uh, many of them uh, are popular with the people, but uh, they, they don't have the basic knowledge of what governance is about. And uh, uh, another irony of it is that they didn't care uh, if they are in office, we don't have we, might, we don't have to have philosopher kings. But if we elect people, then there is there are constitutional provisions which make them to, uh, now get competent people as their advisors and their ministers and so on, so that at least they can run the system effectively. Because that is what is happening. Uh, a leader doesn't have to know everything, but if he surrounds himself with experts. But I think he has a high chance of uh, delivering uh, the mandate of the people. Yeah, former President Lucia Gorbassanjo has spoken a lot about uh, the state of the nation since he left office. And part of what he said yesterday is that Nigeria has failed Africa and that poor policy uh, by governments have pushed Nigerians into poverty. Now, um, when you look at that statement that, you know, Nigeria has failed Africa. Coming from him, who has been former president not once, how do, you, how do you see that statement? How do you see that statement coming from someone like former president Olusha Gorbassanjo? Uh, it is true, really. You know, Africa and the world expect Nigeria to uh, provide positive leadership. Uh, to me, I think Nigeria has not only failed Africa, but Nigeria has failed Nigeria. Uh, because uh, with our endowment and the high expectation uh, from Africa, from out with the rest of the world, that we are uh, expected uh, to provide uh, a leadership, uh, I think we have failed in that regard. And this expectation is not only today. Uh, you know, it has been with us right before our own independence. And even after our independence, uh, there was uh, such expectation. Um, initially, we started on good footing. Uh, the leaders uh, then, you know, were doing something positive, which happened to put Nigeria's name on the world map. But somehow, you know, after the military coup, and then now we say the kind of leadership that we have, we pumble. And uh, so that is why I said what he said is true, but to me it's even short because uh, of reality, because it is true we fail Africa, it is also true that we fail ourselves. And we have failed to uh, put ourselves, you know, uh, according to the expectation of others and according to our own expectation. And this Lua, you can relate it directly to the leadership that we have. And that is what uh, I think um, is the truth of his statement. All right. Right beside that statement by former President Obasanjo, you have fuel crisis. I mean, forex crisis, beg your pardon. Passengers grown as foreign airlines hike fares. Details of that is on page 19. This is a major issue right now, Professor. 
flight tickets. Yes, it is. Off the roof. Mm -hmm. You see, it is it is not only a flight ticket, it's, it's everything. I assume uh, one of the papers yesterday carried uh, the news, even uh, road uh, transport uh, has been so high that people are not patronizing it. And you don't expect, uh, uh, like airlines, you don't expect uh, business people uh, to be good Samaritans and now uh, sell their own products uh, at a, a you know a, a loss because with the way we have fuel price going up and the naira value depreciating, it's expected that things have to be very expensive because after all, if they are to go with uh, the normal price, they will lose, and you know uh, business people uh, will not want to a place where they will lose. So I think eventually it's either they raise the price or they close shop and leave Nigeria. And whichever way, it is not going to be good for the country. And the Naira right now, as today, is 860 Naira per dollar. And it keeps rising. Hello, Professor. Professor, yes. yeah, yeah, I'm talking yes, about the dollar, so you see, you see the it keeps way. rising, meaning that this, this is going to go on. It's going to go on until God knows when. And then when you also consider the trapped funds, yeah. the airlines trapped, uh, trapped funds that's been uh, ongoing for some time as well, you wonder when will we get respite from this? You see, with, with the policy of this uh, uncontrolled deregulation, uh, you don't expect uh, the, the Naira to appreciate because, one, we are not a producing country. We, we are a consumer country, and uh, so uh, we think what um, producing countries or developed countries do, uh, like China, when they devalue their currency, uh, that we can replicate it and get the same uh, miracle or magic. They have produced countries, so by the time they devalue their currency, their products will be cheaper and people will patronize it and then they will have more market. They will turn around employment, their factories will work. But here we are, we are a consuming country, so we now devalue our currency, which literally means that whatever we are going to buy, we are going to buy it uh, 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 more expensive, it will be more expensive than uh, this. And so by the time you bring them in, you bring such things, and now you sell yourself uh, products at a very cheap rate, then uh, inevitably the Naira will be falling and it will continue to fall. And uh, like you said, only God knows when and where it is going to stop. So uh, I think uh, these are some of the things which uh, the advocate of this, uh, or what they always call, we call in the academic line, the neoliberals, uh, fail to look into. Okay, they think by the time you devalue your currency, you deregulate, uh, you uh, you know open your market, then perhaps uh, the the miracle will uh, will happen. But uh, because, like I said, we are a consumer country, they didn't take they didn't factor this uh, fact into their own analysis, and now see within uh, two months. Everything has gone haywire, uh, which we don't know where it will stop. All right, R right beside that headline, on still on the Punch newspaper, you have Navy won't stop burning vessels, ferrying stolen crude. Page 12 is where details of that is. Nigerians have often kicked against the burning of vessels, um, ferrying stolen crude, because Nigerians believe that these vessels should be investigated so that the owners, those who are stealing it, can be caught and prosecuted. But here you have Navy saying, Navy won't stop burning vessels, ferrying stolen crude. 
Yes, I think, I think banning it is, is a double jeopardy. One, uh, you see, we, we lost uh, the resources which could, we could have confiscate and uh, uh, use it for our own benefit. Secondly, and most importantly, it covers the track of who and who are involved in the issue. So that is why you see, uh, we said perhaps burning it is a deliberate uh, policy uh, to cover the track of uh, those who are involved. You know, corruption, as you fight it, it fights back. So when it sees that it is about to lose, then it will take measures in order to be on top, I mean, to remain on top. So that is why this burning is there. I think the, 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 the thing that should have happened is that the president being the commander in chief, I should uh, stop his feet and come out and say that uh, they should not burn anything that is caught so that at least rule of law shall prevail. And by doing that, uh, we are going to achieve at least three things. I mean, at least three things. One, we can restore what has been uh, stolen, that is restitution. Two, we can punish who are uh, involved in, in it. And three, that will deter other people from doing it in the future. But by banning it, we lose all these three elements. And uh, like I said, we cover the track uh, of uh, who and who are involved. We give them real shelter and that they are not exposed and that they are not punished. And at the end of it, we cannot deter others from doing it. And indeed, and also add uh, pollution to that. <laughs> yeah, there's also there's also the side, the fourth element mm -hmm. there is pollution, mm -hmm. okay, and uh, the the fifth element is which is uh, that we are giving the world we are denting the image of, of Nigeria uh, that we are more barbaric, we are not civilized uh, in doing things because we we uh, we tend to do jungle dust, justice by burning it at least this is the image that we are giving to the rest of the world that uh, we we rather we prefer jungle justice than rule of law wow all right let's move from the punch still so many other headlines on the punch newspaper but we need to touch other newspapers that also have you have the guardian newspaper now and it's leading with made in nigeria smartphones fumble as monthly importation hits 50 billion naira now some people will say to you professor we didn't know that we had made in nigeria smartphones yes we we have <clears throat> you see uh, this is part of also our own problem we have high test for foreign things and uh, uh we even before the, the pressure from the World Bank and IMF. But now, uh, we, the thing has been exacerbated because we now don't have uh, the, the, the domestic uh, products to compete favorably with uh, the foreign one in any respect. And then there's also the psychological aspect that uh, we prepare that uh, foreign goods are better so that is why we have this in. and thirdly we don't see the dangers of uh relying on foreign goods one by relying we are in destroying our own system mm -hmm. secondly we are creating an army of unemployed uh, able people mm -hmm. uh, thirdly uh, we we are spending a lot of our own resources on the foreign sea. In other words, we are developing their own economy at the expense of our own economy. And uh, we are creating, like I said, a dangerous precedent because when you have uh, able people who are unemployed and uh, eventually, you know, hunger uh, doesn't uh, discriminate. So by the time you have these problems of uh, this and that is why we are also uh, deliberately creating crimes and criminality in our own uh, country. Indeed, one begins to ask the Ministry 
of commerce and industry what exactly do they do sometimes these questions come to mind because if these things are not known not popular among nigerians just as for instance aba made products are not popular that popular among nigerians you begin to ask some salient questions about um, the relevant agencies that should have helped to push some of these things so that Nigerians will get to know what we have and then promote what we have as against Nigerians maybe not knowing enough and then thinking that the foreign ones are better because that's probably the ones they are more familiar with. Right? You see, you see they, they say it's part beyond the Ministry of Commerce or something. Uh, it is a deep-rooted, uh, you know, structural problem with our system. And it... Uh, it you know it, it is even if you have leadership uh, you know because we have that mentality of uh, a, you know that uh, inferiority complex and uh, most importantly is because we are integrated deeply integrated into the capitalist system and uh, at a, a very low level uh, so the even if you change the ministry or whatever where, where they decide is the ministry in most cases will just be informed of what happened. Uh, even if they want to take step, it will be part beyond the uh, capacity. Yeah, you the see, Ministry you know, of Orientation. You can of also add Ministry of Orientation to it. I mean, back in the days we had MAMSA and, you know, I think Nigerians have just been left to themselves. To be honest with you, that's some of the things one can pick out of some of these things that we see and we hear. It's as though all facets of our lives have just been on autopilot. Well, a lot of them. I, I stand to be corrected. But that's part of what we see. Nigerians also need to be sensitized. Nigerians need to be... I mean, why do we have government? You see... Uh, you see, uh, if you look at the uh, uh, progression, every country, uh, you know, the world is dynamic. It is not static. But unfortunately for us, we seem to be retrogressing instead of progressing. These issues that you talk about, like Mamsa, like uh, Nawa, and other things, in the past, you know, it, it was a kind of holistic approach. Okay, the, the government, various aspects of element, arms and the organs of the government are in sync. They read and this, from the same, on the same page. But now you see there, there is a lack of coordination. And uh, so even if uh, one sector is trying to do something, uh, it, it is not integrated into uh, the system. Uh, like uh, this campaign, of uh, buy Nigeria, patronize Nigeria thing. Yes, and, you exactly. know they, they don't do it. And then uh, those who are producing the Nigerian thing are not are producing substandard. And the government is not doing anything uh, to protect them, uh, so that uh, uh, from undue and and equal competition. And this is one of the conditions that uh, uh, is imposed on us, that we have to open our market for competition uh, with uh, foreign goods. And as we do, you know, they, they have the technology to have uh, better and cheaper things than we do. And at the same time here at home, we don't have a good industrial policy that will now help our, uh, you know, producers, I, I mean, uh, entrepreneurs to now produce quality things. Uh, instead, we make it very cheap for them. Take, for example, electricity is, is the engine of development, but we, it is not it's so eclectic and it's, not, it's unaffordable. And uh, so other sources of energy for the industries are not available and they are not affordable. And yet you expect they bring and make quality products uh, that will compete with the foreign ones. And um, we didn't have a, you know, integrated system where we educate Nigerians or mobilize Nigeria to patronize our own good. So I think the, the, the thing is so much that uh, 
Now, this is what will be the end result. It will not be surprising or for us to see people, you know, going for foreign things but with all this and with the psychological inferiority complex that we have. Uh, so I, I think it is um, un not unexpected for us to be where we are now. Indeed, thank you so much, Professor Kamilu Sani Fage, for your time and insight on Off the Press this morning. Time will not permit us to look at the other headlines today. But thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Take a break and come back and give you our first hot topic. Stay with us.